The 2017 to 2020 Suzuki GSX-S1000 F. Suzuki rolls its GSX-S1000 F into MY2020 with a new glass sparkle black colorway that is sure to turn heads day or night. A GSX-R based engine design delivers the goods with advanced rider aid technology along with adjustable suspension and abs protection to finish the package. This model makes an all new return in 2020 after a hiatus last year. Suzuki GSX S1000 F design. The GSX S1000 F tows the GSX family line and leads the way with an aerodynamic front fairing that delivers low resistance penetration and houses the dual headlights in relative safety. The fairing opens up in its usual scoop that funnels cooling air through the radiator and forces waste heat out of the mostly enclosed engine compartment. Up top, a mostly clear windscreen forms the wind pocket, but since it's vented, it pulls double duty as a head buffet mitigation device that'll smooth out the upper slipstream for yaw. A short rise handlebar mounts atop the upper triple clamp with dead short risers, and this adds up to more of an upright, standard type rider's triangle that takes some pressure off your wrists and shoulders, plus it leaves room to tuck in for speed if you prefer. The waist area where tank, seat, and body converge is just about as narrow as it comes for confidence at stops and plenty of room to throw around some body English. The pillion perches atop the upswept tail section to form a butt stop to go with the curved front saddle so it cradles and contains the pilot, even under, shall we say, the most enthusiastic acceleration. A swing arm mount hugger joins a subframe mount mudguard to contain the fling from the rear wheel, and as usual, the upper member also mounts the plate, tag light, and rear turn signals to keep the tail looking slim and clean. Suzuki didn't stray far from its established look, so the new GSX S1000 F sports the usual curvaceous panache and aggressive posture. Suzuki GSX S1000 F chassis. Suzuki revisited its previous GSX S1000 F frame with low weight, low bulk, and agility in mind, and the new frame has all of the above in spades. Inverted, 43mm KYB forks float the front end on the full trinity of adjustments and 4.7 inches of travel for a plush and tunable ride. Outback, a link-type rear shock takes care of business with adjustable preload and rebound damping, so you can count on a fairly high degree of ride quality adjustment all the way around. Symmetrical, 17-inch cast aluminum wheels round out the rolling chassis with Dunlop radial hoops in a 120 up front followed by a 180 for the generous, sticky contact patches they provide. Dual, 310mm front brake discs work with four-piston, Brembo monoblock calipers to deliver the bulk of the braking power, and out back, a 240mm disc and single-pot Nissan anchor does its bit to keep your rear end where it belongs, behind you. A standard ABS feature calculates the available traction and modulates its levels of intervention accordingly, plus this year's model rocks new brake lines that transmit more pressure to the binders for any given amount of effort at the lever due to hose expansion mitigation. Overall, the factory sought to make this a fun and responsive riding experience, seems safe to say, job done. Suzuki GSX S1000 F Drivetrain The Jixer-based engine rocks an inline-4 configuration in the GSX S1000 F with a 73.4mm bore and 59mm stroke that gives the mill a spicy, 12.2 to 1 compression ratio and 999cc total displacement. As for the mechanical bits, the FEM analyzed, cast aluminum pistons ride in low friction bores that eliminate the need for a heavy cylinder insert through the use of Suzuki's composite electro-chemical material process. Not only does the SCEM toughen the aluminum bores, but it offers excellent heat transfer from each cylinder to the water jacket of this liquid-cooled engine. Each of the four 44mm throttle bodies carries an elongated 10-hole injector tip and a pair of throttle plates. One set is controlled by the rider and the other by the Suzuki dual throttle valve feature that balances rider demand and power potential for smooth transitions throughout the range. The factory adds its exhaust tuning valve that broadens the power band through variable exhaust back pressure and its easy start feature that automatically operates the starter until the engine catches, all with a single momentary stroke of the starter switch. 
An advanced traction control system finishes the electronic suite with three levels of intervention plus an off setting for a full raw ride. The transmission runs with a vertically stacked mainshaft and countershaft within the gearbox in a move that shortened the overall drivetrain and helped to centralize the weight. A slip and assist clutch couples engine power to the six-speed transmixer for a final measure to prevent loss of traction at the rear wheel and a tough chain drive carries the power to the rear wheel. The GSX-S1000 platform is limited by electronic governor at 164 miles per hour, which is plenty enough to get yourself in a whole heap of trouble with the folks down at the department, know what I mean. Suzuki GSX-S1000 F price. Base MSRP on the 2020 GSX S1000 F is a cool $11,599, just three bills more than the outgoing 2018. Not a bad deal for a workover like the F, received ahead of this year and the power plant that drives it. Suzuki GSX S1000 F competitors. With such a populated field, I didn't have to go far to find a worthy opponent from another of the Japanese big four in Kawasaki's Ninja 1000SX. Kawasaki Ninja 1000SX. Like a brother from another mother, the Ninja 1000SX leads the way with an aggressive front fairing complete with a vented windshield, and Kawi takes the extra step of recessing the front turn signals in the fairing rather than using standoffs like the Suzuki. Short rise bars shorten the upper rider's triangle for a more upright riding posture to make the Ninja as commuter friendly as Suzuki's GSXS. Kawasaki pack in more cubage with its 1043cc, inline 4 engine, and its electronic suite is more extensive by far as it adds KIBS, riding modes, power modes, KCMF, and bi directional KQS to the mix. Slipper clutches and electronic throttle valve control are constants across the board, but Kawi seals the deal with an inertial measurement unit that adds corner-sensitive functionality to its onboard safety systems. So far, the Ninja has shown itself to have a slight edge in most categories, but that changes at the checkout, Kawi looks to get $12,399 for its 2020 Ninja 1000SX, and that's almost a grand more cheddar. Read our full review of the Kawasaki Ninja 1000SX. He said. Bikes like this are a great alternative to sportier models in that while you can ride tucked in for speed, you don't have to, so it's more comfortable to ride for longer periods of time. I'm not wild about the bird beak front end, but form follows function and aerodynamics comes before aesthetics, so it is what it is. Personally, if I had to pick between the two, the Ninja's electronics would be the deciding factor. She said. My wife and fellow motorcycle rider, Alan Hinton, says, it's very comfortable. I like the ergonomics. The power delivery is smooth and the bike is very responsive. It's a sporty ride even though it's a standard with an upright position. It is a little tall for me, but I'm such a shorty so I'm a bit tippy-toe on it. Average height folks tell me they are comfortable and taller folks say they have plenty of room and don't feel cramped at all. It really is a nice bike for commuting or weekend fun. It's not aggressive, but I can get a little aggressive if I want to. Suzuki GSX-S 1000F Specifications Suzuki Further Reading Suzuki Read more Suzuki News if you liked this video, please share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.